The top three mistakes that I see new coaches make when they are starting and building their own online coaching business. All right, let's jump right into it so that you can identify if you're making them and if you are, fix them so that you can make more sales. All right, so mistake number one is to wait for clients to come to you. And you know, you might be doing this and not even realizing it because you might be working hard. You might really feel like, man, I am, I'm, I'm not waiting, I'm doing stuff. But when you really think about it, the things that you are doing are not getting you in front of clients actively. They're really waiting for clients to find whatever you're doing. So let me give you an example. Uh, maybe you are working really hard on your website but what are you doing to promote your website, to get your website in front of potential clients? Because there are millions of websites out there. Uh, what's going to help someone find yours versus all those other ones, right? Or maybe you are really, really working hard on creating a great PDF that you can share with people so that they can join your email list. Or maybe you are working on a great podcast or a great YouTube channel. Awesome. Those are all great things to be doing at a certain point in your business. But when you are starting out, those things take a little bit longer to gain traction, to uh, really start seeing people coming in. And so really think about this kind of as like push and pull, right? So the content that you put out, your website, all the things that are gonna have people finding you via search, via uh, just word of mouth, via uh, randomly stumbling upon one of your social media posts, for example, is I really like to think of it as kind of pull tactics where you put out great stuff and then people find you and that builds up over time, absolutely. But you don't want to be just relying on those because you could be waiting for years before you get your first client. And so what you want to be doing instead is kind of pushing. In other words, getting in front of your potential clients. And that really comes down to figuring out, okay, where are my potential clients spending their time online and how can I get in front of them? If you want a little bit more help with that, I've got a great video for you on uh, four really creative ways to get started to find your first paying client. So I'm gonna link that for you uh, either on the screen and or in the description below. So make sure that yes, you are putting out great content, you are letting people come find you, but you're not relying on that, especially in the beginning of your business because that's a waiting game that most people don't, don't win because how long are you going to want to wait around uh, before you give up without seeing results? So that is mistake number one. Mistake number two is to try to be everywhere. And what I mean by that is maybe you've uh, tried this yourself where you're trying to be on Instagram and then Facebook and then LinkedIn and then YouTube and write your blog post and write uh, a newsletter and create a podcast and do who knows what else. The truth about that is that that is incredibly overwhelming and you're going to end up not really doing any of those to the best of your ability. So instead, what I recommend you do is to pick one or at the most two kind of traffic generating, lead generating, sales generating platforms to focus on when you are starting out. So when you're starting out most of the time, I recommend choosing one social media platform depending on your industry and where your clients are. Maybe that's LinkedIn if you're a career coach, maybe it's Facebook and Facebook groups if you work with small business owners, um, maybe it's Instagram if you're a health coach. I'm just giving you a few examples. Of course, make sure you go and do your own research. Um, and I do also actually have another video for you on how to use social media well to find clients and to grow your business. So I'm gonna link that for you here as well but choose one that's going to help you make the most of your limited time and resources. Really use that to get your business going, to start growing your income. And then once you've got that, you're starting to build your audience, you've got systems and processes to make things a little bit easier. You kind of have the lay of the land, then branch out to the next one. And the, the attitude you wanna have for this is that once you start something, you're going to do it to the best of your ability and you're gonna do it for 
ideally forever, right? For as long as you are gonna be in your business. And when you have that mindset and that attitude, what that does is it makes sure that you don't try and do too much at once and burn yourself out. So to give, your, to give you an example, when I first started uh, my first online coaching business, I was doing digital advertising, uh, helping people with that because those were the skills I had back then. And so I was helping small business owners. And this was about six, seven years ago when Facebook ads still felt relatively new to a lot of people. And so I found my ideal clients in Facebook groups. I went in there, I and I was in my job at the time too, so I didn't have a lot of spare time. I went in there, I answered questions every day about ads, I shared content every day about ads, and connected with people, didn't wait for them to come find me, shared great content, and was in their Facebook news feeds every single day. Again, not trying to be uh, everywhere, right? And I focused on that almost exclusively for on Facebook. Facebook, then I grew into Facebook ads, Ads. Um, then I created my own Facebook group for about two to three years. And I really doubled down on that to make sure I was, uh, and Facebook live streams, almost forgot that once they started. Before Facebook live streams, I did add on Periscope, Periscope live streams, because it was just so powerful to have a video component as well. So those were the two parts that I really focused on. And then a few years in, once I had the business, I had really consistent income, and I said, okay, I'm ready to invest time and energy into expanding into other areas. That's when I started uh, doubling down on, for example, my YouTube channel. Uh, I started after that, after I'd done that for about six months, again, got in the lay of the land. I uh, really committed to growing my Instagram not necessarily growing my Instagram, but just being on Instagram and social media a little bit more. Uh, and around, and before I did that, actually, around the same time that I started YouTube, I also, uh, a little bit after that, started building my organic traffic, my, my search traffic via my blogs on my website. Right, so everything was very step by step. I chose the kind of lowest hanging fruit version for myself first, uh, and then I thought about, okay, what are the different other things I want to add on? What's the order that I want to add them on? What's the time commitment? What's the resource commitment? And how am I going to be able to roll this out in a way that I can sustain that's doable and is not overwhelming and does not burn me out? So that's how I recommend that you think about it as well. So that's mistake number two. Now, mistake number three is to try and build systems too early in your business. And this can feel a little bit um, counterintuitive because you might be thinking, well, isn't the whole point of a business to have basically a system, right? Where you've got people coming in, you are selling them something, and then you're delivering whatever it is that you sold. And yes, that's ultimately the point. But remember, what you start out with isn't necessarily uh, or what your, your end goal is, isn't necessarily where you're going to start out with. Just like if you're trying to run a marathon, you don't from day one try and run 20 plus miles. I've never trained for a marathon, so I don't know, but I imagine you probably start out running like two or three miles, right? The first day or, or week or so. It's the same process for building your own online business. The process is really to make sure that you start out and you get in front of your potential clients. Nothing matters before that because you don't have enough understanding of your audience, your marketing, your sales processes before you've gotten your first few clients and really even how you're gonna coach someone, how you're gonna help someone. Now, let me be clear, even if you know, and you do know, there's no if about it, what it is that you're helping people with, the experience, the skills that you have, it's a whole other different animal to market that, to sell that, and to help other people with that, because other people aren't you. They're gonna have a different set of experiences and things that they're gonna need help with and way of thinking about it. And so your first goal is to really get the hang of that with your first about three clients. What I usually see is that after about three clients, new coaches start seeing a system like, oh, okay, this is where I really get a lot of my clients. These are the things that they really connect with. These are the things that uh, really drive them to say, okay, I'm ready, I want this, let me hire you. And these are the questions that I get throughout my coaching. This is the, the system, the process that I use to coach someone and help them get great results. And then 
as a result, that naturally builds out what it is that you are going to create and then systematize, right? So then you might be able to take the content you create, put it into an email sequence that you automate. You might be able to take your sales process and automate that as well. Um, or at the very least, really automate the way that you drive uh, sales calls and get sales calls booked. Uh, and then you might be able to take the way that you're coaching your first few clients and create a, like Google Docs or content that really allows you to systematize a lot more so that you're not saying the same thing over and over on every single call. Again, it usually takes about three clients before you start seeing those patterns and realizing, okay, this happens every time. This is not a fluke. This is what I'm seeing. I feel confident enough to move on, start creating these systems and uh, continuing to grow my business. So those are the three top mistakes that I see new coaches make that I highly recommend you avoid so that you can skip those mistakes and uh, get closer to making your sales much sooner. Now, if you're wondering, okay, how do I go out there and get my first or next paying client? I've got two things for you. So the first thing I have is a great PDF on my 15 second script to help you get your first or next paying coaching client. Uh, I'm gonna link that either on the screen and or in the description below. And I will, uh, and you can, if you want it, you can go to the link and sign up for it and get it. The other thing I have for you is a video on how to start your coaching business in 24 hours. We're gonna skip the overwhelm, the analysis paralysis, and all the things that keep new coaches stuck. And we are gonna get you started in the next 24 hours, getting out there, getting in front of potential clients and just going from, you know, dream or thought or, or trying to figure out what am I missing to getting it done. And so I'm going to link that video again, either on the screen and or in the description below. If you are new to my channel and you found this helpful, make sure you hit the subscribe button to be notified when I release a new video every week on building your own online business. And if you've loved this video, you have a really great takeaway or comment or a how you want to share, definitely let me know in the comments below. All right, that's it for today. Thanks so much for being here and I will see you next time.